If misery truly loves company, I've got news for you guys. There is absolutely no room left on the bus I'm on right now. Not one seat available. Yesterday absolutely sucked. I mean, there's no other way to put it. Yesterday, there were five discounted plays here at the site. Now, Anthony Redd and Gabriel DuPont, who I'll talk about in just a moment, they both hit theirs on total releases yesterday, and rather easily as well. All three of the discounted side selections lost, chief among them, yours truly, 7-2-1 the past 10 years with the bowl opening game of the year. I think Boston College had the game won three times before losing outright laying three yesterday to Penn State in the Pinstripes Bowl in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium. And you know what? It's gambling. And what can I do? I mean, you know, I was going to drown my sorrows in M&Ms today. And come to think of it, I've already drowned my sorrows in M&Ms today. But, uh, you know, that game sucked. And you move on. And that's all you can do. I mean, then you look at Brian Rusica yesterday. He had his 109 winner number two in a row. How big was Southern Cal's lead against Nebraska? And the Trojans couldn't hold on for the cover. How about Steve Budin's number one football service to Cali Cartel? I mean, they had been on such a phenomenal, phenomenal roll. And now suddenly they've lost three straight plays after winning 20 out of 24 50-dime releases. They've lost three in a row. Navy covers against, uh, wins outright against San Diego State. They lose the Western Kentucky game a couple of days ago in the most bizarre fashion you'll ever see, and then yesterday on the wrong side of Cincinnati and Virginia Tech. And it happens sometimes. So all we can do is try to make money today, and let me give you some of the guys that are red hot, and hopefully they can do so for you. Chief among them, Anthony Red, who's going for winning day number 9 out of 10 and number 12 out of 15 overall with his 100-dime NFL winner number 4 in a row. His bounce-back lock of the year. He likes a team coming off a loss last week to win and will recover today. And it's his NFL major wager winner number 8 out of 10. Listen, hit his 100-dime winner number 1 in the NFL uh, three Sundays ago with the Giants rolling 36-7 at Tennessee. Two Sundays ago was the Eagles and Cowboys over the total on that Sunday night game of play. You got that 100-dimer for just $14. And then last week hit his 2014 NFL underdog shocker of the year. The Falcons, a six-point road underdog, winning outright at New Orleans 30-14. to And you got that play for just $22. This play is twice as strong as the 50-dime winner number uh, four in a row you got last night with USC and Nebraska easily going over for just 9 bucks. Today, you save $80. By using coupon code RED, his last name, which is R-E-D-D. -D. Little heads up for you, though. Craig Davis, who has made $10 betters nearly $12,000 with his NFL action alone since the 2011 season. He has his 100 dime winner number 13 out of 16 on the opposite side of A-RED. And I tell you that, for those of you that are newcomers to the site, because if you happen to be in a long-term package with either Craig or Anthony Red, well, now you know what the other guy has in this particular case. Uh, meanwhile, Sean Michaels, uh, yesterday, 59 winner on Gonzaga. Uh, boy, talk about a nip and tuck game. Bulldogs blowing a 16-point lead, but they managed to cover the five with the seven-point win in Provo. Uh, today, his 100-dime Sunday night winner number two in a row. Number one, last Sunday night, Seattle, 35-6 at Arizona. You got it for $34, saving $65 off the regular price. Today, same deal, save $65. Sunday night game this time, of course, they flex the schedule. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati with the AFC North uh, title at stake in that one. 3-0 with Sunday night plays so far this season. And 100 dime NFL releases the past six years. 56 wins, 29 losses, and three pushes for the winningest football handicapper at this site, college and pro combined, making $10 betters over $31,000 the past five years. The coupon code is Sean, S-E-A-N. Uh, one other guy I wanted to tell you about, Jeff Benton. Uh, last two Sundays, he had his biggest NFL plays of the season, 159 plays. One was the Texans, where he bought the hook, covering it in Indianapolis two weeks ago. Last week, it was uh, the Giants, the underdog, with the double-digit road route of St. Louis. Today, one and only 150-dime AFC game of the year, Raiders and Broncos. You got each of those previous two plays for $34, saving $85 off the regular price. Same thing goes today. Save $85 again uh, by using coupon code Jeff, J-E-F-F. -F. Oh, one more quick one, guys, before I get to the free picks. Gabriel DuPont. Yesterday, you got his, um, oh gosh, what was his total winner? I can't remember, but you got it for $7.77, I can tell you that much. I think it was South Carolina, Miami, under, in fact. Uh, today, 109 winner number eight in a row, 
and fourth straight in the NFL. Save 80 bucks, get it for $29. It's his NFL Underdog Game of the Year, and it goes on the late card today. So those are among the featured selections. Let me talk about the uh, games here for today. Last Sunday, of course, a 3-0 sweep with the uh, complimentary plays, one of them being the Steelers at home against Kansas City. And I'm going to come right back with the Steelers here tonight. Minus the 3.5 points. Naturally, I would buy down the hook in this case if the line's anywhere between 3 and 4.5 and points, in fact, depending on what you price the game at. Um, like the Steelers in this spot. Listen, when these two met uh, three weeks ago in Cincinnati, uh, the Steelers, monstrous fourth quarter, 25 to nothing. They outscored the Bengals in the fourth 229 yards total offense in that fourth quarter. Uh, the Bengals couldn't stop uh, Le'Veon Bell in that game. 185 yards for 26 carries. They ran for 193 total yards in that contest. And you know, it's not like Andy Dalton had a bad game in that particular contest. In fact, he was very efficient uh, in that game. In fact, Threw for 302 yards and 21 to 29. And it's not like A.G. Green was injured, which he is today. You know, he's playing basically with one arm in today's game. I mean, let's be honest. You know, he had a monster game that time. Uh, 11 catches for a career high, 224 yards. And yet the Bengals still lost because their defense has been awful all season long. And isn't that ironic? Because that's Marvin Lewis's calling card. So you've got a Steelers team that's averaging 33 points at home this season. And listen, this Steelers team has been schizophrenic. I mean, you lose to Tampa Bay. You lose on the road to the Jets. Go figure. You need a monster comeback to win on the road against Tennessee. But at home this year... They have done exceptionally well in terms of beating teams with over 500 records. So I'm going to go with them here tonight to win the game, to cover the game, to claim the uh, AFC North title as well. Um, again, I just don't think the Bengals can stop them defensively. And uh, the Steelers also have the advantage that they are at home, and the Bengals are coming off the Monday night home game against the Broncos, which... As I've said repeatedly in other video reports this week, it wasn't so much the Bengals won, it's that Peyton Manning gift-wrapped it with a big bow with the four interceptions he gave the Bengals the victory in that contest. Another game, Green Bay at home against Detroit. Now, you know the deal here. In week number three, Lions won 19-7 at home. It was a game in which they scored 10 of their points thanks to a fumble recovery and a safety, but all in all, they held the Packers to 223 yards in that contest. But listen... That was then. This is now. Packers are a better team offensively now than they were then because they've opened up the passing game. And Eddie Lacy has found many more run holes in the run through because the offensive line has stabilized and gotten drastically better. On the defensive side of the ball, Dom Capers made a major move when he moved Clay Matthews to inside linebacker, and that has really shored up the run defense. You know, one time this run defense was dead last in the league. Now they're up to 22. Okay, 22 isn't great, but it's a hell of a lot better than 32, if you know what I mean. The other thing is here, you tell me. Do the Lions play well outside of the Dome? I don't think so. Has Matthew Stafford ever delivered in a big game on the road? I don't think so. And is it the fact that the Packers have won 23 in a row straight up in the home in this series? You bet your bippy they have. Um, and when you think about the Packers this season at home, they have played two poor halves. The first half of their home opener against the Jets. The second half of their last home game a couple of Monday nights ago against the Atlanta Falcons. Otherwise, they have been simply phenomenal at home. A money-making machine other than those first two halves. That resulted in a push against the Giants and, of course, a point spread loss when they blew the 31-7 lead to the Falcons two, uh, three Mondays ago. Uh, and Aaron Rodgers at home has averaged 301 yards passing a game, 23 touchdowns, zero interceptions, 66% completions. Um, seven and a half, a big number, but I would buy down the half point if it's seven and a half or seven, and I can realistically see the Packers winning this one by 10 or 13 uh, in the rematch. So I like the Packers in that game. Uh, your other free selection here today, let me take a look at the other game. I want to just... Um, oh, yeah, New York and Philly. Jeez, how could I forget that? You tell me, did the Eagles have anything to play for today? Chip Kelly can say all the right things. That, you know, he's going out there at their focus is to win this game. It's not to play third stringers. It's not to evaluate rookies. You know, they want to win this game and end the season on a positive note. Tell that and sell that to the players in the locker room who just lost three straight games, 
blew it at Washington last week, cost themselves of any chance of making the postseason. They're sitting at home this year, and now they got to go to the Giants. The Giants, meanwhile, a team that started fast, and or no, actually, they didn't start fast. They started kind of down, then they went up, and then they went way, 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 way down, <laughs> losing seven in a row. But now they're finishing fast. And mainly it's because of Odell Beckham Jr. and Eli Manning. I mean, they have just turned into a potent combination. Uh, do you realize the last eight games, Beckham? 48 catches, eight touchdowns, averaging over 120 yards per game. And Eli Manning's coming off a 300-plus effort and three touchdowns at St. Louis last week. Now, I've said repeatedly, the Eagles' secondary sucks. And I think everybody in Philadelphia will agree with me after seeing Bradley Fletcher getting roasted last week by former Eagle Deshaun Jackson. Their cornerbacks are awful. I don't care if it's Kerry Williams, Bradley Fletcher, or if they give Nolan Carroll the start today. Their strong safety is a joke. And Nate Allen, I think that also the Giants will be able to run the ball today because the Eagles' run defense is not nearly as good now in the second half of the season as it was when they won the first go-round 27-0 because D'Amico Ryans, their middle linebacker, suffered a season-ending knee injury shortly thereafter. Also, I don't think the Eagles are going to be able to get eight quarterback sacks of Eli Manning like they did in the first go-round. So I'll lay the two-and-a-half with the Giants and hopefully go 3-0 and with the free picks again, for the second straight Sunday. That'll do it, guys. If you have any questions, always contact customer service. And remember, you can always check out the homepage for all your other promos, discounts, et cetera, all that kind of good stuff. Best of luck to you, and I'll talk to you again tomorrow. No NFL tomorrow, of course, but plenty of ball action as the college postseason continues. Take it easy, guys.